When Oklahoma became a state in 1907, the state constitution created a system of local government. Each of our 77 counties had the exact same structure as the next. The county seats were placed so every taxpayer could get to the courthouse, take care of business, and travel back home in one day, all on horseback. Every citizen had the opportunity to participate and use the services of our new state. More than a hundred years later, very few of us ride our horses to the courthouse. We drive cars and do business on the internet, but county government is still vital to the lives of every Oklahoman. The modern county courthouse is where you can get a marriage license, or register to vote, or file a deed. It's where criminals are locked up and prosecuted. Whether it's emergency 911, public records, emergency management, building and maintaining local roads and bridges, or clearing those roads during ice storms. The courthouse is the center of activity. County government is still average citizens helping their neighbors and communities thrive. It's one of the most accessible forms of government and it's closest to the people. Each of our 77 counties has eight elected officials, three county commissioners, a county clerk, assessor, treasurer, court clerk, and sheriff. Let's take a moment and see the duties of each of these. A county commissioner's job is a very diverse role. Not only do we take care of the roads and bridges, primarily we are financial people. We have to help manage the money. Counties are divided into three districts, each with an elected commissioner. All three form the governing board of county commissioners. You have to meet once a month by law. Most counties will meet uh, three times to four times, usually on Monday. The board of county commissioners is what makes up the funding mechanism for all the other offices, all the other elected offices. No, we're not over them, but we are over their funds. Not only is the board responsible for preparing the county budget, along with all the other county officers, but it also calls county elections approves the purchase of operating supplies and equipment, sells or purchases public land or buildings for the county, approves bids for all of the purchases exceeding $10,000, enters into all contracts on behalf of the county, and manages the county road system. The county clerks have three primary responsibilities, administration, financial records, and land records. Through administration, we are recording the activities of the county. The county clerk is the secretary to the board of commissioners and to other boards such as the tax roll correction board or excise equalization board. But something more behind the scenes to the public is that finance department where we are recording all of the transactions and the expense of public funds. The county clerk pays bills and payroll and can serve as the county purchasing agent. The clerk's office also maintains the budgets for all of the other elected officers. Of course, most citizens associate the county clerk with filing land records and deeds. How does a person prove that they own the property they say they own? The county clerk records deeds, mortgages, oil and gas leases for the public and for the permanent record. All of these records are open to the public. But computerization means books like these may be a thing of the past. Well, that's changing over time. Certainly with technology, we're able to provide documents in a different manner. Online availability in some counties gives the public even greater access. But whatever the form of future documents, the county clerk has a responsibility by law to carefully preserve and protect the records, many of which date back prior to statehood. It's going to be a continued process after I'm long gone. When you purchase property and file a deed, you become the property owner of record. Mr. Cook? Yeah. Hi, I'm Dennis. I'm with the county assessor's office. One of the jobs of the assessor is appraising and assessing all taxable property for ad valorem taxes. Ad valorem, uh, as a Latin term, means according to value. So you pay taxes based on what your property's worth. So you would like for it to be uh, based really on what your property's worth and not a uh, high value, not a low value. The assessor estimates the fair cash value of all real and personal property. We have to determine what fair cash value is. Fair cash being what a willing seller, willing buyer, knowledgeable seller, knowledgeable buyer, no duress, no foreclosures, an arm length transaction. What would that represent in the market? 
So the property is valued every year, but as far as visually being inspected, it's done every four years on this four-year cycle. During visual inspections, assessors check for changes that may increase or decrease the value. The valuation is adjusted for any exemptions, such as the homestead or the disabled military veteran exemption. Then an assessment ratio, or a percentage of the property value, is applied to get an assessed value. Assessment ratios can only be changed by a vote of the people. To ensure that every citizen is treated fairly, the Board of Equalization must approve the assessed value of each property. However, property owners can contest the fair cash value if they believe there is an error. They can first come in and talk to the county assessor about it. You can take it beyond us to the Board of Equalization with a formal appeal to the Board, uh, and then if a taxpayer is still not satisfied, once they go through the Board of Equalization hearing, they can take it on to district court. So I think we're about the only office uh, where every decision we make on valuation can be challenged all the way to the Supreme Court of Oklahoma. The ad valorem taxes are determined by applying the millage, or taxation rate of the county, the local school district and career tech, health department, and other local units of government to the assessed value. A mill is one dollar of tax for every one thousand dollars of assessed value. The treasurer is often called the banker for county government. We invest, so that's like a banker, and all monies, all county monies are receded through this office. You have to have money if you're going to be the banker. You collect it, we keep track of it, and so we have an excellent bookkeeping system. The funds received are placed in safe investments until dispersed. Treasurers collect all property taxes and other revenues and then distribute them. Uh, the procedure at the end of the month is called apportionment. The money is receded in my office all through the month. It is not dispersed until the end of the month. The monies that come in that are to be apportioned are apportioned to the schools, to the cities and towns, and back to the general fund of the county. Duties of the treasurer also include issuing delinquent personal tax warrants and preparing financial reports for state and county officials. While the county clerk keeps the records for the county, the court clerk keeps the records for the district court. The court clerks are required to maintain all the integrity of the district court records. We are to provide personnel for our special judges, district judges. We are to provide statistical information on the court cases that are filed within our office. Cases are filed, traffic tickets, civil divorces, probates. We keep up with all the filings, or just, we keep all the records. The duties of the court clerk include maintaining the proceedings and journals of the district court, keeping records of all jurors and witnesses, and furnishing full transcripts of any court proceedings. I didn't pay my fine for Elisa Lynn Hoffman. The court clerk is also responsible for several other activities, including endorsing injunctions, collecting all court costs, such as traffic fines, and issuing marriage licenses, and in some counties, passports. The marriage license are always a fun thing. People are very happy then, and also passports, because usually people are in the process of taking a trip. But they shouldn't be confused with county clerks. We have a lot of people that come up here wanting to record deeds, things, you know, power of attorneys and things, and we have to explain to them we only handle court matters and advise them to go down on the second floor to the county clerk's office. The elected officials of, of each county is very, very important. Each one of them has a main functional job and responsibility and accountability that they're for. Uh, the sheriff is just kind of part of this. We interact uh, daily, especially with the county clerk and the court clerk and also the county commissioners. Sheriffs are the chief law officer of the county. Their job is to keep and preserve the peace. They arrest those charged with crimes and operate the jail. But county sheriffs have several other duties. Most people get in law enforcement because we like to get the bad guys. That is what our whole focus is. Many of us, when we become sheriffs, we then realize there's a lot of different responsibilities and challenges to the job besides that. Sheriffs are responsible for the operation of county jails. They and their deputies also serve warrants, papers, and orders of the district court. One of those orders directs the sheriff to sell the property of individuals who have had judgments rendered against them. Well, usually if there's a default on a loan, we have to have a sheriff sale. That gives the bank a chance to buy that property back. It also gives the public a chance to buy that property. Another function of the sheriff's office is to serve personal property tax warrants. A tax warrant is issued by the county treasurer when a person fails to pay taxes on their personal property. And then the sheriff or his tax warrant deputy or his field deputy 
then it's responsible for going down and serve notice and also for the actual uh, confiscation of these, uh, this tax property that's in doubt right now. So how is county government funded? Well, it's funded by you, the taxpayer. The largest source of revenue is ad valorem taxes from millages set by the state constitution. But property taxes are not just for county government. The biggest part of ad valorem tax, though, contrary to belief, is goes to the schools. On average, 68 cents of every dollar collected goes to local public schools and 13 cents to career tax. The county keeps only 12 cents, and most of those funds are used to run the functions of the courthouse. County citizens also have the option of voting to fund several other services, such as the county health department, the county library system, emergency medical services, or county industrial developments. Since 1984, counties have also had the option of a countywide sales tax by a vote of the people. And counties also earn interest on dollars invested by the treasurer. County government also receives funding from fees for some services that are set by the legislature. While jails and many courthouse functions are funded largely through sales and property taxes, construction and maintenance of roads and bridges are paid for from other monies. Counties in Oklahoma are responsible for more than 85,000 miles of roads and over 14,000 bridges. That 85,000 miles is roughly three and a half times around the world. We try very hard to, to keep the roads in the best shape that we can as a public safety issue. Counties normally fund county road and bridge work through state taxes on fuel, motor vehicles, and oil and gas production. For county roads, most of the money uh, comes from uh, gasoline tax, uh, diesel tax, uh, some excise tax. Uh, we get some federal money that runs through ODOT for, uh, for bridges and so forth. That money is collected by the state of Oklahoma and divided among all 77 counties based on formulas that consider the number of bridges, road miles, population, terrain, and the size of the county. In addition, counties benefit from joint projects with Native Americans and their tribal road funds. But no matter the level of funding, maintaining roads and bridges will always be a priority for county government, for safety as well as economic development. Being able to keep good infrastructure in place is vital in order to get good growth in your community as well as encourage the industry. The people we elect to positions of leadership in county governments are everyday citizens who believe a responsible local government can make a positive difference in the future of their communities. They become the planners and the problem solvers by understanding their community's current conditions and the direction they are heading. County officials are the first line of communication when working cooperatively with other jurisdictions, including federal, state, and local officials. County government works, and it works because of dedicated people from all walks of life who are willing and able to serve the community in which they live. As a leader, you've got to make tough decisions. You've got to make the decision whether or not you spend money here or there. I think uh, taxpayers get more bang for their buck or, or stretch a dollar further in county revenue than, than any other form of government. And I think part of that is simply because we're closer to the people. To me, being an elected official is a very prestigious and, and an honor to be an elected official in the state of Oklahoma. With this comes a lot of accountability and a lot of responsibility. County government is a government of the people and, and it's here for them.